Hello, 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 and welcome back to Awful Movie Reviews. Don't, don't shoot. I, I'm not armed. Director Eddie Romero was a Filipino director who's responsible for a long series of low-budget horror movies produced in partnership with American Studios. I don't know him. And one of those films was The Beast of the Yellow Knight. Honestly, if the other films are like this one, it does not make me want to watch them. I know just how you feel, my boy. It's also the fourth production ever released by New World Pictures, a distribution company founded by Roger Corman. I knew it. I knew he had something to do with this whole disaster. It was just too good to be true. You two-faced old bastard. But just before we get going, I think it's safe to say that you guys know the drill by now. If there's a bad movie you'd like me to review, just leave me a comment down below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe and let me know your thoughts and feelings on The Beast of the Yellow Knight. You do it. Right now. This production is one of the most confusing films I've seen in a while. For most of the runtime, I was just scratching my head trying to make sense of all of this. And the conclusion I came to is that this simply is devoid of any sense. I never expected you to say anything like that. The movie opens up in 1946 in the Philippines, where the army is hunting down an American soldier named Langdon, hiding in the mountains. Just before dying, the devil comes to the guy's rescue, presenting himself in the form of an overweight shaman with no t-shirt. Thank you. He proposes to become his disciple and live in different people's bodies. So Langdon's soul does that for the next 25 years until we arrive at the time most of the story takes place. Langdon's soul hops into the corpse of a man who's been badly disfigured after an accident. All right, I can understand that. Frankly, that's all I'm prepared to believe at this point. But we don't understand why the soldiers are hunting for Landon until 20 minutes before the movie ends. The guy used to be a soldier who collaborated with the Japanese army. He was also responsible for raping, pillaging, torturing, and murdering people for no reason. Not really a guy I'd like to meet. It would have been nice if they had given us more context to better understand this story. I had no idea what was happening. Oh, probably the smart thing to do would be to forget it altogether. But since the soldier Langdon and Philip are played by the same guy, I thought at first they were the same characters, which made me think, wait a minute, isn't this guy supposed to be dead? So are we in 1946 or in 1971? It just doesn't add up. At the beginning where the devil is talking to Langdon's soul at the funeral, and then it cuts directly to the scene where Phillips is in the hospital, it made me think that the guy had risen from the dead and that it was his funeral. This is all so pointless, Langdon. What are the plans of Satan? Why does he need Langdon to carry out his work? It's not really clear to me. Philip changes into this monster who looks like the Grinch after having gone through two very bad divorces. It goes on a rampage occasionally, leaving behind a series of gory mutilated bodies. You really are sick, you know. But that's about it. There is no clear grandmaster plan in all of this. Although maybe the project was to make him into a world champion boxer. Because whenever Philip turns into this beast, he's really got one hell of a swing. Check this out. <laughs> yeah, you don't mess with this guy. I assume that they called him the Beast of the Yellow Knight because when Satan shows up, he's surrounded by this yellowish fog. That's the only thing I could come up with. Otherwise, Anyways, this whole thing is just really badly edited and written in a very sloppy way. In fact, one thing that stood out for me is the dialogue, because some lines are truly awful. Who are you? As far as you're concerned, I am and can only be. Whoever. Or whatever you think I am. Nobody could have done that with his bare hands. I don't know, Lieutenant. Even a weapon has to be handled. And you kept coming back. To use you. That's just another way of saying that you need me. You don't hear that every day. I don't know what the writer was thinking when he thought it'd be a good idea to incorporate those lines in there. You're right. You see, that's the point. 
things aren't going to get any better. In fact, Philip is played by John Ashley, who would later go on to be the narrator for the A-Team. It's too bad that his performance is offensively bad. He couldn't possibly play a more unenthusiastic and boring character. Him and his stubby sideburns make him look like an idiot. The acting is another big problem from this movie, because it is very, very, super duper, extremely offensively wooden. You wonder if these people really were professional actors. Alright, so, bottom note, this American-Filipino collaboration should have never happened. It's a bore, it's dull, it's a confusing film, it should be illegal to make stuff this bad. What an awful movie.